We would like to ask you to give us an insight into your life and tell us something on the current situation. I don't really have one story to tell. What I will remember about COVID um, are individual situations which uh, felt surreal. Um, so, for instance, when Germany had already gone into lockdown and the UK not, um, friends and family sent me videos of police cars driving around in their neighborhoods, um, making announcements via speakers telling them to stay indoors. And I remember feeling quite shocked by that. It It felt... Um, yeah, I guess almost fascist, um, definitely worrying. Um, and then Britain went into lockdown and my husband and I went for a walk and a bus passed us by, which under normal circumstances would have been crowded. And there was just one elderly couple sitting inside, both wearing face masks. And that looked like from a science fiction movie. It was like a scene from a movie. And we continued on our walk and there was a lady and she almost pressed herself into a hedge in order to widen the distance between her and us. And we already had quite a distance. Um, so it, 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 that felt like as if, as if, again, we were in a movie or somewhere where she's a phobia sufferer or um, somehow surreal. And we were queuing in front of the supermarket, inspecting the trolleys of people who were coming out of the supermarket, checking what was there, uh, which reminded me of stories I'd he heard of Russia and, and the GDR. Um, and um, then we flew back from the UK to Germany at some point and Heathrow was empty. There was nobody on the platforms, nobody. Um, We were the only people on the Heathrow Express between terminals. So uh, that, yeah, it was like an apocalyptic scene and we were the only survivors. Um, it's it sort of the whole, there were so many little situations which made me feel as if I was living in, in a kind of, um, in an artwork. Yeah, in a dystopian novel with a vocabulary um, of... Uh, self-isolation, lockdown, social distancing, all these words that pop up and that feel completely normal after you've heard them five times. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was all very eerie and strange. Um, positive for us personally was the time we could spend together as a family Mm, my children became very independent in their schoolwork, which was great, um, but we could just um, live at a slower pace, which I think is great. We uh, developed a slightly more Mediterranean rhythm, getting up late, going to bed late, and that felt much more humane and natural to me than our usual getting up at 6.15, rushing out of the door routine. Also, um, of course, there was hardly any traffic. So everything was much quieter. I I really like that. Um, negatively or worrying, I find um, how it has shown how divided British society is. Uh, people who didn't vote for Boris Johnson feel um, they've been proven right in everything, that the government is completely incompetent. And um, yeah, it's just uh, shocking. The numbers are shocking. Mm, while people who voted for him feel that he did a good job and, um, you know, you're always smarter in hindsight. So uh, they find explanations for this mismanagement. Um, and, and there's really hardly any dialogue between these two groups that I find very worrying. Uh, I also find... Um, it worrying how badly German papers, quality papers, have reported or are reporting on the situation in the UK. When I talk to friends and and they tell me what they've read, or when I read papers myself, and and just uh, there's so much uh, misinformation in articles uh, and information which, if you if you know the culture. A little bit or you know if, if you follow the situation in the UK a little bit you know this information to be uh, false 
Mm, it, it, it's these articles are written by by people who really have absolutely no clue it seems but then they get them published in the Süddeutsche in the Spiegel in all these papers um